So, yeah, ask your questions, ask your questions. So I'm here, regular, regular knee on neck choke. Pop. If I get this in and he tries to push, my, my toes are in the mat. It's not going to move anywhere though. I'm still going to be able to drive all my weight through him. Worst case, I come back to my own belly. Let's say he catches me a little bit earlier. Here he blocks that in. Yeah, okay. And I'm going to shoot that through, look. And then go to this choke. This choke. Yeah, the, the arm triangle style choke. What were you saying, man? Oh, I was just asking what was stopping him from rolling, like coming away from you. What's stopping him going away? Yeah, the, yeah. the collar grip. So I have to have this collar grip because as I pop up, if he tries to go away from me, yeah. Okay, he's gonna, he's gonna go. That's where the arm comes into play. So there's two ways that he can go away from me. One is like shuffling away from me, but leaving his back on the ground. That's what that's gonna stop. And then rolling away, picking up that elbow is gonna stop it. So this is gonna keep him close to me, and this is gonna stop him rolling away. So as I enter the knee, look, try and scoot away from me. He can't go because of that. Try and roll away. He can't go because of that. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Any other questions? <laughs> Get the grip on the collar first. Yes. Yeah. So classic way to do neon belly like Cyborg uh, used to do is thumb in the back of the gi. And this is classic way to go neon belly. Yeah. So classic way to go neon belly is this. Pop. Neon belly. Thank you very much. He starts pushing here. He starts pushing. Ah, thank you. Oh. That's where it came from. Right. This is where this position came from, this knee on neck choke, cyborg. We used to get to knee on belly, the guy would push, screw you, pick up this arm, thank you very much, he put the guy to sleep. So I've already got that grip because it's a, it's a consequence of going to knee on belly. I, I have that grip because I'm going to knee on belly. And then I transition, usually when they start trying to mess with my knee on belly, we switch. Okay, classic cyborg, yeah, go to YouTube, cyborg, knee on neck choke. You're gonna see loads of examples of that from back in the day. The deeper the cut, the, the thumb into the back of the net, the better I'm assuming, because it matches if it's a bit um, slack, you know, like the bow and arrow, you have that kink. Yeah, on. I don't want it super slack, because I don't want loads of play in the gi, he's gonna start getting away from me. So I tend, to, I tend to just grab by the shoulder, and then I've got enough slack that my hand only reaches the back of his neck. And this is perfect, <laughs> this sort of grip here is perfect yeah, for like the, the canto strangle, the step over chunk. Yeah, if I gripped back here, I'm actually going to lose contact with his neck so that when I step, it's, it's not a good choke. But if I reach to that shoulder and pull back through, all the slack has gone and my wrist is now being driven into his neck. From here, we can do all our step over chokes, canto strangle type stuff. Any questions? Anything else? Okay. Cool. Nice Try it. Game plan there and you from that side. Yeah, this side control position is really nice. We've got the lapel, we've got also as well as the lapel. So I'm trying my my choke now. Okay, and maybe he blocks my head again. Now what I'm gonna do is come through with this arm and I'm gonna baseball back choke my own lapel. And then I sit through and I put my elbow from over here down, my forearm is gonna find his neck. And then I just, I just raise and I drive. Just a baseball bat choke. Uh, sorry, just a paper cutter choke using my baseball bat grip. So as I've got this, look, he stops my head again. Maybe I don't want to pop up. I just go through, baseball bat grip, my own lapel, give myself some space, look, and then I lift the head. Okay, so I'm lifting the head and I'm driving that forearm into his neck. So we've got a nice little paper cutter style choke, but using our own lapel, yeah? The one everyone kind of mostly knows is once I've fed his own lapel <coughs> behind, I can come through that's and we can go here. We can go back spin. Loads of options, yeah, yeah. using our lapel. What you just did? What was that different what you just did? The, the, the paper cutter. So the, the, the difference between a paper cutter, which is this, and I'm driving my forearm into his throat, into the front of his throat. There. Different to the baseball bat choke, where my wrists are on the side of his neck, and I use exactly the same motion as for the ninja choke. I'd spin, I put my head on the mat, and then I lift him to me. 
That should be much more of a pure blood choke than the paper cutter, which is an air choke. Okay? I don't think I can use my own lapel for a true baseball bat choke unless I've got super long lapels. Because I'm, I'm, I'm getting bound up in my armpit by my own gi here. I can't actually spin now having this grip. Remember, when we did the, when we did the ninja choke, we wanted to be grabbing the end of the lapel because then it gives us room here to spin the head. Now I'm grabbing it up here, I can't actually spin as much. So that's where I'm gonna go paper cutter instead of using the baseball bat choke with my own lapel. Baseball bat choke with his lapel, still gonna work. Okay guys, lots to play with there, lots for you to play with and see what we're doing here in class. Give it a go, thank you very much. Thanks mate.